Truth Espresso, episode 169. Face it, we all would rather sleep in this morning. <sighs> That's why God gave us espresso to kickstart our zombified corpses into hyperdrive. <laughs> And now, giving your mind and soul the morning shot of truth it craves. <sighs> this is Truth Espresso with Daniel Minnick. Hello, this is Daniel Minnick, your host for Truth Espresso, and this is an episode of Truth Espresso Express. I am on my way, starting my commute from my house to work to do another day of software programming. We got just a little bit of dusting of snow yesterday, but by this morning, a lot of it has been cleared up. It looks like it's going to be a uh, a little bit of a nippy, but uh, warming up day today, uh, clear skies, and I'm hoping my head <laughs> is a little bit clear today so that I can talk about the topic for this episode. What I would like to do for this drive to work, this Truth Espresso Express, is just to give a little bit of my two cents on the slap heard around the world. Now, first of all, I'd like to point out, given the culture that we have today, it seems like there is so much drama around things that happen with Hollywood. So, of course, if someone from Hollywood slaps someone else from Hollywood in public, that is going to become worldwide news, and there's going to be a lot of emotions over it. It's going to become as big a news item as Biden inflation and um, the Russia-Ukraine war and I've, of course I've seen like a meme on Facebook talking about like don't let this showing the slap distract you from this and it'd be like more important issues like the war in Ukraine or Ghislaine Maxwell and you know Jeffrey Epstein's island of horrors <laughs> so yeah getting perspective on that we need to realize that um, this isn't like some huge tragedy. It's not as if there's a, the first shots were fired in a war here. This is just Hollywood politics, and it's something that all uh, parties to what happened there can brush simply brush it off. Pretty much, you know, within seconds, minutes, hours, or days of it happening. There's there's drama that happens all the time in Hollywood. But of course, you know, it's going to be a little bit unusual. So what exactly did happen here with the Oscars? Now, let me point out that at the beginning of the Oscars, now, I didn't watch the Oscars. I've only listened to or watched the few clips of it, um, you know, because I, I just never really have watched Oscars in my life. I'm, I'm young enough so that really there haven't been any good Oscars. It's never really been worth my time, um, but I'm also old enough to know that the Oscars have become more politicized over time, and certainly um, as we approach the Oscars in 2022, that when you have political issues <laughs> absolutely drenched in wokeness all the time, that of course the Oscars are going to make wokeness the most important thing that anyone can do as a matter of virtue signaling, as a matter of morality and civil rights and everything, you know, all morality hinges on woke politics that all of a sudden have come into the fray and become the norm about a decade ago. And so there were the attacks on Governor Ron DeSantis's so-called don't say gay bill, which is just what the opposition has called it. And that bill is really just a bill for the parents to advocate for the parents' rights to know and to control what their children see, especially this is just for younger children like kindergarten through third grade, that they will not be taught explicit stuff in school and be brainwashed about it 
you know, about their gender identity and so on by perverts in the public school. And so, but they think that it's, you know, their, their mind is set that they're, that kids can, you know, even little kids that age have to figure out their identity, which could be different from, you know, their biological identity. And they somehow need teachers in public school to encourage them and to help them about it when kids still have to learn (laughs) more about who they actually are as God has made them before they learn allegedly about, uh, you know, how they identify their minds are pliable they need to be taught solid truths and not to be confused when they don't really even know what gender is pretty much so yeah you had the woke politics at the beginning and then eventually you had the slap heard around the world so what happened there so chris rock was kind of uh, emceeing here and he was introducing uh, people who would be nominated for the Oscar Award. And he first made a joke about Will Smith's um, relationship with his wife and how it was kind of open, like, you know, he's he is, was able to make her list. So, you know, she has a list. So she has relationships with other people. And Will Smith, although being legally married to her, um, you know, he's still just kind of considered part of her list as far as relationships go. And so, yeah, there's that component that's, you know, eye roll, that's part of Hollywood. Um, We shouldn't be surprised at that, and people can joke about it, and they're going to laugh about it, and that's par for the course. And then, so he was... Chris Rock was introducing Will Smith there, and then he made a joke about his wife, and unfortunately, the name is escaping me, but uh, I guess, you know, for Will Smith's sake, maybe I should keep her name out of my mouth. (laughs) Um, Yeah, we'll get to that. We'll get get to that in a bit. So then um, uh, Chris Rock... Uh, made a joke kind of uh, passing jab at Will Smith's wife and he said you know G.I. Jane 2 looking forward to it so the idea the joke is that she would star in uh, the sequel to G.I. Jane with and I think the, the actress on the first one was Demi Moore something like that I could be wrong I'm trying to remember off the top of my head here But, you know, in that movie, which I didn't watch, but I've seen the trailer for it at the time, this was, I think, about 20 years ago or so, you know, she had to have her head shaved in the movie because she's joining the military and, you know, remove those traditionally feminist um, appeal and aspects uh, so that she can properly participate in military exercises and so on. But Will Smith's wife has appalusia, and which it affects hair growth it affects uh, you know it means like hair loss and so she shaved her hair short she buzzed her head and she has you know short hair like you know sometimes I will cut my hair I mean it's a little shorter than mine when I cut my hair But, yeah, so he was making a joke at her expense there that because she had that, because she had short hair, that was her now new look, that she was fit for a starring role in a sequel to G.I. Jane. Um, (laughs) Yeah, so... As he said that, with the camera, you could see Will Smith's laughing at it. You know, it's a joke. He joked that's just par for the course to make fun of people. And uh, But then you could see that his wife was uh, kind of offended by it. Now, you know, she had said earlier on um, videos that she, you know, is learning to live with it, she's strong, and so on like that. But, you know, obviously you could see that, you know, she can't brush something like that off. She's still going to be sensitive about it. So what you don't see on camera then is obviously Will Smith, uh, after laughing, had to see that his wife was very unhappy about that joke and so that affected will smith and so 
then when when the camera goes back to Chris Rock, he says, "Okay, that was good." Something like, "Okay, that was good." Moving on, and he's gonna uh, move on to something else. But then he's smiling, and he and he says, "Uh oh." And then you see Will Smith, you know, marching up to him, and he's just kind of laughing. And, you know, he doesn't know what to expect. You know, Will Smith's um, not happy about the joke, and he's gonna say something about it. But as Will Smith marches up, he just clocks him across the face with a a slap, <laughs> and then marches back to his seat. And Chris Rock's starting to uh, laugh it off. He's like, "Ho ho ho! Um, you know, wow! Um, you know, he just slapped something out of me." And then, <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, they said words, and I'm not going to repeat them here. So Chris Rock says that he slapped him, and then says, "Wow!" again, and and then as he's trying to continue on with his routine and recover from this unexpected incident, Will Smith also uttering uh, words I won't repeat, but he says, you know, like, you keep my wife's name out of your mouth. And then as he was trying to continue, Will Smith, you know, you could see he, he says it's slower, and you could see that he's angry, and he repeats, you keep my wife's name out of your mouth. And then Chris Rock says, like, I'm going to, uh, you know, and then he's trying to recover from that a little bit. And then he says something to the effect of that it's, you know, wow, like you don't see something like this. You know, this is the best moment on in TV or something. Best night of TV, you know. It's like trying to make a joke out of it because he's emceeing. He's a comedian. He's going to tell jokes. So, long story short, nevertheless, Will Smith is nominated uh, for, he gets the Oscar, he does have his crying speech as usual when he received the Oscar, and um, he kind of apologizes, you know, without directly mentioning Chris Rock, for, um, so then there's drama that unfolds later on in the news about how there's investigation for what uh, Will Smith did, how he apologized, how everything's good, you know, things like that, but as soon as this happened, the internet kind of exploded into meme land, and so, yeah, you have all kinds of memes of uh, Will showing the freeze frame of Will Smith's arm across, and uh, Chris Rock with his, like, face expression showing that he just took the smack across the face, the blow there, and you could put almost anything in that meme, so it's kind of like, if someone's trying to make a point against someone else's, uh, um, ignorance that here you go you have this as a meme and it's pretty much become the new Batman slapping Robin meme <laughs> you know and some people have even joked about that with memes now a few days ago I made a meme and put it on Facebook and that you know it shows Robin was trying to defend Will Smith and say that you know he's defending his wife against Chris Rock's joke and he's standing up for her and then Batman slap and Batman says violence is not the a, a valid response to a bad joke and so it's you know I, I explicitly said I'm not picking sides or making a point other than just to make a joke out of this so you know the irony is that Batman is slapped Robin and telling him that violence is not the correct response to a bad joke while well, you know he's slapping Robin to ref to mirror um, you know Will Smith slapping Chris Rock that Batman is criticizing so it's it meant to be a kind of a humorous jab no pun intended there of irony about the situation and yeah, I wasn't trying to pick a side. I wasn't trying to um, make any kind of point about virtue other than to just make a joke at the incident's expense with the meme that I immediately thought of. Now, there have been, uh, of course, you know, the world in this week has exploded into different things about is it fake or real and who was in the right. Now, of course... 
good people can fall on both sides of who was right with their reasoning, and good people can fall on both sides of whether this was staged or not. Personally, I don't think it was staged. I've tried to entertain the arguments for if it was staged, and I'd look at the video closely to see, okay, if it was staged, you know, you think that being actors, they could have, you know, made it better. They could have made it, <laughs> in some ways, look more convincing, and in other ways, look more like it was acting. <laughs> Now, reasons I don't think it was staged are that it seems to take away from the politics that they wanted to communicate there. Like, so they wanted to talk about woke politics, So, but it would seem like this particular incident, if it were staged, it doesn't seem like it was necessary to get it to be staged. Now, I know an argument for it being staged is that um, the, Os the ratings for the Oscars are at an all-time low, and they wanted to boost ratings by drawing more attention to the Oscars, but I would think that this isn't the way to do it. Like, I don't think many people are going to be watching the Oscars next time around because, oh, are we going to get more entertainment? Maybe someone's actually going to hit someone else with a closed fist this time. Ooh, entertaining. Um, I don't think that's you know a good reason for it. Um, another thing was that they made the the woke politics there um, kind of central to the Oscars and it seems like they wanted to entertain the movies that they should get awards based on woke politics so it would seem to me that having a staged incident where Will Smith smacks Chris Rock that kind of appends the wokeness that they wanted to communicate because now um, people are not going to think of the Oscars and think of whoa that speech was really nice they really made some good points that I should take to heart no that's all going to be forgotten and what's going to be remembered is that incident uh, devoid of the woke politics and I don't think that either side, especially Will Smith, because it seems like most of the, the criticism is on Will Smith, that he's going to risk his own career, put a stigma on his own career about it for a staged incident that, you know, that he has to keep on pretending. Now I know he's an actor and by definition, he and Chris Rock as actors are going to kind of, they're used to lying <laughs> as far as their profession there. But like Jussie Smollett, where he puts on an act with the Osendairo brothers, and then he's going to lie and lie and lie about it in court to the police and everything like that. Like, he is going to live the rest of his life committed to lying about something. I don't think that's... You know, I don't think Will Smith is going to put on the stigma of an outrage and an actual assault that didn't happen and uh kind of like jesse smollett there he's gonna well in fact it's kind of like the reverse that he's gonna lie about it to make it as if he actually did get angry and he actually did <laughs> commit violence against uh, you know chris rock there and defend the idea and continue to lie about it when he in fact didn't do it like he you know it wasn't or if he did do it, it wasn't real to some extent. <laughs> so, yeah, I somehow, that's just not convincing to me. I don't think uh, actors that care about their reputation are going to live with that for the rest of their life if it was something they're planning to do. I think it was real. I think it was, there was some level of anger on Will Smith's part when he saw his wife's face that she was not having it and so that kind of changed his mindset that kind of clicked that got to him and he probably felt bad about laughing about the joke and that therefore to kind of redeem himself and to defend her honor there he just kind of wanted to march up and he slapped him so yeah I could be wrong here but I I'm not convinced 
there's just too many problems with it being a staged thing. Another one is that, you know, there was a picture showing a close-up of Chris Rock's face with a freeze frame when um, Will Smith was about to slap his face and that it looked like like you can look at the the cheek that's going to be hit and it you know you could see it looks like there could have been a false cheek some kind of padding on there but of course you know I looked closely at that picture there and it looked kind of like like it was just a lighting issue and you know you have to say for Chris Rock there he has cheeks you know he has fuller cheeks than some other people and uh, you know and that helps his comedy routine it helps his facial expressions you know it helps his smiles and stuff like that so i think that just with that freeze frame it's just an issue of lighting that would make it look like somehow he has some false cheek on it now if he had uh, a padding or something on his cheek when did he put it on you know how was he able to just slip it on when you know his arms were down there for that part like just exactly when did he put it on and when did he take it off because you have the camera looking at him all these other times before and after and there's nothing there so it's obvious to me that it's lighting and that theory really goes out the window and now unfortunately i've just arrived at work i parked so Having talked about why I don't think it was fake, then I plan to continue this on my drive home uh, from work today to talk about, uh, you know, what side of this issue do I pick? You know, do I pick a side or, you know, what nuances are there? Just what do I have to say about the issue? Uh, Who was in the right? Who was in the wrong? If anything, Uh, so just my two cents about that. And so... Stay tuned after this break. I think as parents, we assume that kids are going to just know the right way to do things. You have to train them by teaching them to do it over and over again until they actually get it. This is Yvette Hampton, host of the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. Join us each week for a new episode as we offer encouragement and resources on biblical discipleship from popular speakers and authors, as well as parents just like you and me. Find out more at schoolhouserocked.com or listen anywhere you find your favorite podcast. Well, hey there. Welcome back to part two of this uh, exciting episode of Truth Espresso Express. This is your host, Daniel Minnick, and I am driving home from work this Thursday evening. Just going to chat a little, give my uh, opinions about the slap heard around the world. And this was the incident at the Oscars on Sunday evening where Will Smith slapped Chris Rock on stage in public, televised for the world to see. And so I know that this has become kind of a dividing line for lots of people. There are a lot of people taking sides in various points on this incident. And in part one, I talked about why I believe that this actually was uh, real, that it wasn't staged. And I gave a few kind of pitiful reasons, but reasons nonetheless, not forensic evidence by any stretch of the imagination. If uh, someone were to present very strong evidence that it was indeed staged, it wouldn't break my little heart. It wouldn't shake my little world. Uh, I would just say, okay, well then, there you go. But otherwise, um, it just doesn't make sense to me, given all the factors that I've noticed when trying to look at this incident as an outsider, (laughs) that it does not seem to be staged. It seems to be real. And I don't think that neither Will Smith nor Chris Rock would risk, you know, getting into this incident, dealing with the ramifications of the incident, dealing with uh, the sacrifices to their public image, to their reputations, just to try to make the Oscars a little more entertaining, just to try to help the ratings of the Oscars. 
No, I think it was, uh, there was some genuine this there to what happened. There was some spontaneity there. So now, let me talk about where I stand. What side do I take on this incident? Well, I will say that I don't really take a particular side on this. I'm going to look at it for what it is. <laughs> Two spoiled, woke <laughs> actors at a woke event um, having a little Hollywood-esque con conflict with each other. And of course, you know, if they have hold any kind of personal grudge, they can bury it <laughs> within their profession there. It's not like this is the end of the world or enmity between these two. They've had their kerfuffles in the past, but, you know, kind of as just little childish type things. They're not enemies, okay? So... Yeah, now let's look at the perspective from one who would take Chris Rock's side. So let's see. So Chris Rock is a comedian, and to be a comedian, you have to be able to tell jokes. And often jokes make fun of people. They uh, Basically, jokes are, <laughs> in some ways, the ultimate test, the litmus test for free speech. So comedy has its own sense of the ability to exercise your right to free speech. And what makes comedy comedy? Well, it's a way to find humor with elements of truth. And so, you know, it seems to be a totalitarian thing where comedy suffers, where comedy is, uh, people are not allowed to speak their mind, they're not allowed to joke or make fun of people uh, without the totalitarian, politically correct <laughs> police getting on them, especially with, with politics today, where it's like you can't really joke about anything because you might offend someone. And so there is that element there where, you know, if you want to stick it to the man, in a sense, the kind of leftist totalitarian man, if you will, then you want to take Chris Rock's side and uh, in this incident and, and praise him for standing up uh, and being able to recover from something that was over the top, like all Chris Rock did was say words, and then Will Smith um, initiated violence. So it shows that Will Smith did not have an appropriate reaction there, and uh, Chris Rock's defending the idea that you could have comedy, that you can um, make fun of people, and that that's part of having comedy, part of humor, and on. Um, and if you don't like it, then, you know, lump it type of thing. And so, yeah, that would be my defense of Chris Rock and taking that side of things. And uh, if we were to make a political issue out of it, I am someone who likes to defend comedy. And yeah, I'm, so, you know, as you could tell from if you've been listening to me for a while, I seem to be maybe a little bit dry humored. So I probably would not make a good stand up comedian, but I do recognize intellectually, you know, I do have a sense of humor and I do appreciate good comedy and I do also appreciate that political correctness identity politics and what we see in politics now ultimately would be the death of comedy and so I have a soft spot for Chris Rock there and standing up for his ability to tell jokes now let me kind of float over to Will Smith's side and and look at things from that angle. So, remember that Will Smith, when Chris Rock told the joke, the G.I. Jane 2 joke, and uh, Will Smith was originally laughing, but then he noticed that his wife was not laughing because she was personally offended by that joke. She wasn't taking it very well because, you know, it wasn't just a personal choice to shave her hair there. And she recognizes that if having longer hair kind of 
with her peers, with her female peers who have longer hair, and if she considered herself um, prettier amongst her peers with longer hair, she realizes that something she did not choose that affects her ability to enjoy that longer hair makes it so that she can't enjoy it, that she has to cut off her hair to have a consistent head there, uh, you know, and she's having to figure out how to deal with that. And, you know, it, it maybe in her eyes it might reduce her attractiveness. Now, you know, as others have pointed out, now I haven't looked, I haven't paid attention, you know, to what she looks like and so on, but others have pointed out that she's someone who can make do with shorter hair, that she can take that look and still make it appreciably feminine. So, you know, if and it's kind of like if anyone in Hollywood is going to have shorter hair, she can make it look like an a like a, you know, a style that still looks feminine. But obviously from her face expression there, um her reaction to Chris Rock's joke, she was not taking it very well. She was not laughing with almost everyone else in that room. And so, although she has said in the past that she's she's strong and she's going to embrace this, it's not easy. And so that joke, when it came to her and her health issue there, her hair issue there, that became offensive. And Will Smith, off camera, obviously noticed it when he turned to see how his wife was handling it. We don't see that on camera, but we see her face, we see him laughing, and then what's not seen on camera is what is very much implied. He saw her face expression, it clicked with him, he realized this joke was at her expense, and then being a husband... Being, you know, a chivalrous husband, realized that he wants to defend her honor. Now, of course, we can say with all certainty that what he actually did in response was uncalled for, was excessive. Now, if we were to go back to, say, the 18th or 19th century, maybe in the Wild West, you might have these civil, honorable uh, gun duels or something like that where people would where two guys would settle their dispute by having a duel and you know they might make all the formalities about it but it was still you might consider something like that unnecessary and yeah like it's not as if Chris Rock's joke was any threat of violence but you know we could give Will Smith props to some extent that he didn't just join him and laugh he didn't just see his wife upset and then tell her come on lighten up a bit he took her being offended to heart and so he reacted in some way you could say chivalrous and defending his wife's honor <laughs> and I do have to respect that I mean if someone said something that offended my wife and made made fun of her if she had some kind of health issue I would probably feel that <laughs> reaction inside of me that I'd want to clock him one and I'm sure she would not be unhappy if I did that and I probably would not immediately regret it if I <laughs> you know if I did that too now of course there's also the Unfor the, the ramifications of the fact that it's a publicly televised event. So, you know, there's going to be regret there. There's going to be the public relations factor there. There's going to be the impact on that. There's going to be the apologies that he's going to have to make for aggressing against <laughs> someone when that was not the punishment enough to fit the crime in you know, in the strictest sense of public relations there and civil society. So I have to give, you know, both of these parties involved 
Chris Rock and Will Smith kind of like both their due criticism and both their due props. So with Chris Rock, I do have to give him props for maintaining his composure, not fighting back, um, shaking it off, and trying to conti- continue with a routine without really bad mouthing him other than saying that he you know he smacked him but not bad mouthing someone not reacting you know angrily against someone who just physically assaulted him to some degree so i really really have to respect and give chris rock props So on one hand, there's the pro there. On the other hand, there's the con of telling a joke at someone's expense. And of course, there's been there's been speculation as to whether Chris Rock actually knew like why Will Smith's wife um, has shorter hair there. Why she buzzed her hair like somehow I have to think that he knew that, you know, by now he'd have to know that. And if he and if he and Will Smith are buds in some way, they'd have he, he has to know that. So there's the pro there and there's the con. Now with Will Smith, there's the pro that I I respect the chivalry. I, I respect the fact that he's going to defend his wife's honor there. I I really would find myself, you know, kind of relating to that. And now the con is, of course, that, you know, his reaction was excessive civilly uh, to something that wasn't a threat of violence back or to his wife. And, you know, unfortunately, he has to live with that for the rest of his life that, you know, he has that stigma attached. Um, Perhaps better responses could have been to say something, you know, demand that, you know, speak up from the gallery ahead of time, say that his wife was offended, say that that joke went too far, and demand that he apologize and retract it, and then see where the chips fall there. If Chris Rock didn't apologize, then perhaps the best thing would have been for Will Smith and his wife to get up and uh, walk out of the Oscars, you know, kind of like to see if perhaps that would have forfeited the Oscars, but I believe that if that were the reaction, he pretty much would have, you know, received the Hollywood sainthood there, uh, uh, you know, but given how he handled things in the spur of the moment, he you know, didn't do himself any favors there. So there's the pro and con. Pro, (laughs) I deeply respect and could find myself very much relating to, and I know my wife would as well, being the chivalrous husband and standing up for your wife's honor. But then the con is, you know, he could have handled it other ways that would have been better, not initiating violence. And it's, what's funny is that I hear a lot of the left defending Will Smith, of course, because, you know, it's almost like the left wants to get rid of comedy. They want to make speech something that's, you know, only politically correct, and they want to act like it's a political thing, and almost like it was kind of racist or something, when, of course, the two parties involved there were two African-American rich men, and, you know, who are friends, you know, so you can't say that it was, you know, racism there. But I ultimately, I have to look at it, of course, as an outsider. I don't find myself like gung-ho picking sides and defending one of these uh, two, you know, to the death. I'm not going to join any internet forums or social media and stick up for my man in this conflict because it's not really a conflict. When all is said and done, when the dust on this has settled... They're two rich, spoiled, Hollywood, woke (laughs) actors who showed their humanity in this awkward incident. And that's my two cents on the matter. And so 
from a Christian perspective, how would I evaluate that without really picking sides? Well, I would say Christians you know, would find it in their heart not to say bad things about people like that, not to make jokes at people's expense in that way. That would not be the Christian thing to do in the first place. And the Christian thing to do would not be to initiate violence. So (laughs) whatever side you pick on this incident, I would say, you know, have at it. None of this has made it any more of a thing for me to watch the Oscars in the future, to think the Oscars is anything important in my life. And so, well, that's that. And I've arrived home. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Truth Espresso Express and stay tuned for more episodes of Truth Espresso. Thank you for waking up with Truth Espresso. Good morning, and God bless your day. Hey friends, Daniel Minnick here again. If you liked waking up to this episode of Truth Espresso, I would really appreciate it if you would rate it on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or whatever application you use to listen to Truth Espresso.